So we're going to do the LCD tile here. The first thing we're going to do is a test. Let's call it Windows Test. And we're going to make a very simple test case here. Because all we have to do is convert. So we can use approvals. Uh, go approve. Press convert. Zero. And so we want to convert this into an error, so we need that method. And for right now, just print it out. Image equals tile. So let's hold on to that and run it. Thanks, Aaron. And just so that we're all on the same page here, what we're really looking for this to do is do it like it would on your alarm clock. So, oh, except for it's a zero, so that's going to be wrong. So that's what we're looking for it to do. And we're going to need some nice way of representing that. So let's use some kind of transform. And this is just so we can uphold the idea of clarity of code. And let's, let's turn it on its side, because I think that would be an easy way to represent what we're trying to do. So let's transform that into there, and we should be good. And to do that, we're going to need some sort of variable holding on to our overall string. We're going to need to cycle through that string that we're passing in here, which means that length is going to be a tool. We've got to get the ch character out of that string. And I think a switch statement is really the easiest way to do this right here. So if it is a type, that's at the top, remember, so it's going to be out and slash r slash in. And we'll have to handle the other three cases in here. There's the equal case, which is going to be two types on the side. empty case, which is going to be spaces. All right, and if we've done our job, we should be able to see that now. And there we are, we've got a nice zero. So now we need to start pushing a little bit farther. And to do that, we're going to extract that as a local. And uh, separate that out. We should be seeing the same thing. And yeah. Good. And now I'll just, let's go to two. It's nice little small steps. Y, and we'll turn that. All right, so we got zero, zero. We want zero, one, of course. So to do that, we're going to need to go into this transform, pull that out. We'll call it digits. And let's make that an array with the index of it. And now we need to handle the one. So the one is going to be a space, an upper, a space, another up. And that's it. And since we just introduced that, we're going to have to add it to our cases. So this is a. And that's just going to be the one type. So let's run that. All right, so we got zero, one. It's a little hard to see. So I'm just going to add a little bit here to make it so that our approval is a little bit more sensical to us. Let's run that. Good. So now we can see zero and one, and that's looking like Let's go a little bit farther now. Let's push it up to 10. Ah, no, breaking the array out of bounds. So let's uh, just push it up one more for right now. And handle of two, which is gonna be a type, an up, a type, a lower, another type, and that introduces yet another character, so let's 
fill that in. That's just going to be the bottom one. Click run that, see where it's passing. 0, 1, 2. Sounds pretty good. I think we're now at the point that we're ready to push it up to 10. And so let's see. We got 3, which is pipe, upper, pipe, upper, pipe. We got 4, which is going to be space, book, alum, pipe, and then just the upper. We got 5, which is going to be pipe, lower, pipe, upper, pipe. We got a 6, which is going to be a lower, pipe, both of them are pipe. We got a 7, which is going to be the upper. We got 8. Let's run that. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It all looks good to me. All right. And now let's go and push it to 11 so we can start to look at double digits going to fail. Uh, so the first thing is we got this is handling our single digit. So let's pull that out and let's say uh, convert single digit. And then let's just throw that in an if. So if i is less than 10, then we can just convert to a single digit. Otherwise, we need to get both of those digits. So string uh, s1 is going to equal the convert single digit of i modulus 10, then we need to get rid of that digit. Um, and then we're going to need to do the same thing for s2. Now we got both of the digits that we need, and we need some way of combining those. Let's create that. And that really should be return. Get rid of that. And recreate it. All right. And then, so we need something here to return. And now, this is pretty easy. We just have five lines. So we can really iter easily iterate over the five lines that we got. And to that, we can take second string uh, which is here we have to split it so we can get the individual row and so we have to split it on all n um, and then take the row that we're on which is i and then let's put a space in between that. Then we need to do that with the first digit, too. And once we're done with that, we need to add a new line that we want to get rid of. So if we run that, we should be seeing a nice 11 here. Or 10, sorry. And we are. So that's good. Now, I'd like to make this a little more generic. So what I'm going to do is approve this so that I have a nice running passing test, and that will allow me to sort of split this up a little bit. So the first thing is I don't like this slash r slash n, because um, we have to split each time. But since we know that we're dealing with, fit, with fixed width characters, I can just do a substring. Uh, the beginning is going to be i times 5, and the end is going to be i times 5 plus 3. And if I've done this right, this should be exactly the same. And it is. We can see from the green. 
And next, I'd like to sort of handle this as an array. So let's pull this out into an array of digits. Or for right now, we'll just call it S1. And now I should be able to do a for loop. And I'm going to have to go in reverse for this. We're going to say s1.length j greater than or equal to 0. Boom, that's nice. And then I can just move this up. This now just becomes s1 of j. And I should have a pass and test. And I do. Now let's rename that because it's a little bit ugly. So digits. Whoop. And now we have this last piece I'd like to refactor, which is here I have a, this is assuming there's two digits. So let's make it a variable length. Let's make this an array list, so it's string. And then I can just say while i is less than or sorry, is greater than or equal to 10. And then we can move that inside there. And instead of creating an individual digit, we'll just add that to our bag here. And then we have to be sure to do that at the very end. And then I can just do dot two array and make an interesting array here so it's of the right height and that should be working and it is and actually now that I've done this I really don't even need the that early thing although I could keep it around if I cared about the efficiency of it oh and I broke a whole bunch of things but only by adding that little space at the end but I'll just undo it because it is more efficient anyways. Uh, and the lastly, I think this should now work for a whole bunch of numbers. So what I'm going to do is just push this all the way up to 150. And let's see what happens when we run that test. Uh, now it's a little bit hard to read because so much is different. So let's just look directly at what came out of that. All right, and you can see here the 20s look good. All the way up to 89, 90, 100. So we're into the three digits now. Everything's looking good. So we're just going to approve that, run it, and there we are. LCD number caught it up to 150.